Hi everyone, we're back at UKG 2024. We're here with Judson from Chetix Games. Hello. And uh, yeah, it's been a busy weekend for you, showing off deep regrets this weekend. Indeed, yes, I've fully lost my voice already. <laughs> <laughs> but what's the reception been like? Uh, at uh, really, really positive. I mean, you're sitting here talking to me, that's great. I'm oh, getting press okay. interest. Uh, everyone who's sat down to play the game has had an, an amazing time with it, and we filled up our demo sheet on day one. Wow. Like halfway through the day it was full and I just keep having to turn people away which I feel bad about. But I'm always happy to talk people through it. <laughs> um, so why don't you tell us all about the game and, uh, and how it works? So this is Deep Regrets. It's a one to five player horror fishing game where you're going to spend the worst week of your life at sea reeling in progressively more terrifying things. Yeah. So over the course of the game you'll be looking at all of the different shoals of the sea checking out the shadows on the back of them to kind of determine what the potential difficulty is. You've got this handy angler's guide that gives you a range of difficulty. So I know that at depth three, a large fish is going to be at four or up in terms of difficulty to catch. And I would need to spin the dice to catch the fish after I've revealed it. And it would go into my hand. I can mount it for points. I can sell it for it to buy equipment. I can eat it sometimes. Like I might have a corpse I can eat to refresh some dice and draw some regrets. And there's also a push your luck system with the madness. So. Over the course of the game, you're going to gain some of these regret cards, which have a value between zero and three. And each has a little bit of flavor text on there as well, so you can, at the end of the game, tell a narrative of the life poorly lived. The number of these cards you have determines your standing on the madness tracker. So if I had, let's say, three cards, I would be at the one to three tier. Over the course of the game, you might gain more, and that's going to affect the value of fish. So real fish, like this great white, at the start of the game would be worth two more. So this would be worth eight instead of six. But over the course of the game, as my madness slipped away, that could be worth four instead. And the same is true of foul fish. So if that's something weird like this tri-tentacle, at the start of the game, it's going to be worth two. At the end of the game, it could be worth six. Mean low is good because it gives you access to more dice, which is what you use to fish. But the catch is at the end of the game, you reveal all of your regrets, count up the value, and the player who has the highest total is going to lose their most valuable fish. Right. So you're trying to ride the razor's edge of being crazy, but not the craziest. <laughs> you're going to be the second craziest person to see. Yeah. Uh, so the, the, I mean, the artwork is amazing. I, I'm guessing that's drawn a lot of people in. Just by when they brought past it, it has. Sort of yeah. yeah. Which is really encouraging to hear in the uh, the world of AI art. As an artist, that's been very frustrating yeah. to me. Uh, and I, I care a lot about the, the visual aesthetics of, of games. So uh, it has 117 unique hand-inked artworks. So I, I start in ink first, scan it, and I color and procreate. Uh, and every fish is unique. 40 pieces of equipment, 117 of those, 13 dinks, various different player mats. I, I can't stop drawing weird fish. <laughs> <laughs> did you come up with the theme first and then the game, or did you... Uh, so, idea. Um, I've always been a big fan of sea horror. Yeah. So, I, you know, I grew up watching things like The Abyss and Deep Star Six and all this kind of thing. You know, I'm a big Lovecraft fan, as overplayed as it is. Shadow of Innsmouth is a very cool a narrative. And uh, a few years ago, a game came out called Dredge on, on consoles, a video game, yeah. that is a horror fishing game. And I had, at the time, I was working on a game about uh, weird things washing up on the beach. You're, like, combing for shells and finding strange, like, feed and things washing yeah. up on the beach. And I was like... Dredge has a good idea there. I like this idea of a, a horror fishing thing, yeah. like exploring the deep. So I, I was like, I'm going to take that and make it into a board game. But I tried to make it its own thing, not be too derivative. So there's a lot more dark humor involved here. Uh, and one of the things I, I wanted to ensure is that every time you flipped over a fish, you never knew what you were going to get. Um, there was like the fishing actions in Dredge uh, became repetitive after a while because all the fish were functionally identical. So I want to make sure every time you flip over a fish, it has a unique ability. I mean, unique bit of artwork and unique ability. So you're always exploring and discovering new things. Yeah. Being constantly shocked and horrified. <laughs> so what's the plan to get these into people's hands? It's coming to crowdfunding? It's crowdfunding. I am in crunch time. July 1st, hopefully. <laughs> God willing, we'll be on, on Kickstarter July 1st. We've got to do a few things. Uh, the game itself is done. All the art and design is done. There's some minor balancing tweaks, but yeah. I'm, I'm working on the trailer and the how to play video and all yeah. those things. They'll be ready to go. And then hopefully ready for retail by... Q1 of next year, so oh, by excellent. end of March, hopefully. Awesome. If people want to find out more, where should they go online? Uh, you can go to tedxgames.com, uh, and that'll give you a link there to the Kickstarter or to the pre-sale page and all those mistakes. Awesome. Wish you all the best. I, I, I absolutely love the look of this game. Thank you very much. Amazing. And uh, thanks, everyone, for watching, and we'll see you soon. Thank you.